Talk about pure Michigan. All right. I'm here today to ask, request, insist that President Obama, when he is at the Detroit Auto Show this Wednesday, come to Flint, Michigan. We're an hour's north drive from Detroit. We need the President of the United States here. We need federal help. We need FEMA. We need, we need the EPA. We need the CDC. And we need the Army Corps of Engineers. Last night, last night I gave the White House a heads up that I was coming here today to make this request publicly of President Obama to come here. An hour ago, he signed an executive order declaring an emergency for Flint, Michigan. Yeah. But upon but upon reading but upon reading the executive order by upon reading the executive upon reading the executive order it does not go far enough. Mm. It is only for 90 days. Oh, mm. It's only for bringing more bottled water Band to Flint. Band-Aids. Band-Aids. Filters. That, that is not what we need. We need infrastructure fix. The, inf the water infrastructure of this city has been destroyed. And it's been destroyed by the governor of this state. That's right. Pure and simple. And the Republicans. The, this, this, is not a natural disaster. Right. That's correct. This is not a mistake. It's a man-made disaster. And we need to start using the proper words when we talk about this. Ten people have been killed in Flint because of the Legionnaire's disease now that has broken out here. And I want the media to please use the word killed. If it was ten people killed in a tornado, you'd say ten people were killed. Absolutely. If there were 10 people killed in a car accident, you'd say 10 people were killed. Absolutely. 10 people were not killed, though, in an accident here or a natural disaster. That's right. 10 people were killed here because of a political decision. That's right. To save money. That's right. And put at lives the That's risk, right. the, the risk, the lives of people here in a city right. that is majority African American, where 41 percent live below the official poverty line. That's right. That is what is going on here. That's right. This is not. This is whenever they put it on TV, they call it the Flint water crisis. It's not just simply a water crisis. It's a crisis created by the Republican governor and visited upon a city that is majority black. That's right. And is majority poor. That's, that's right, right. That's right. Low that's right. moderate income people. They knew when they found out when they found out that they could not uh, deal with what they had created. When they knew the truth in Lansing that this water was poison, they chose to keep it quiet. Not just from the people in Flint, but from the federal government. They hid this from the federal government. And, and in doing so, they knew that the people here did not have the political power to do anything about it. That's right. They would never do this to West Bloomfield. Never. No. They would never do this to Ann Arbor. Never. No. Farmington Hills. They would never do this to Farmington Hills. Right. Never. They South would never do it. Let's call this what it is. It's, a it's not just a water crisis. It's a genocide. It's a racial crisis. It's a genocide. It's a poverty crisis. That's right. That's what this is. 
and that's what created this. Absolutely. So we are request we are requesting that President Obama, and there are people as you can hear very angry here, because their lives have been put at risk. Absolutely. They should be angry. Absolutely. We are all angry. Absolutely. This was purposefully done. Yep. They knew it was poison. Yep. They knew it was toxic. Yep. Now, know. I want to say a couple words to the media in terms of how you're covering this crisis in Flint. Do we want to give them a minute to do their thing here, or going should we just keep going? Go ahead, Mr. Moore. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. You're upset. I'll do it again if you can't hear me. I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. Four more years? Three more years for the governor. Oh, for the governor. Oh, oh they like the governor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The Republicans are known to pay to bring their protesters. So here's the here's what I want to say to the to the media, especially the national media that are here. Please say, quit saying that we were unhooked from Detroit water. It's not Detroit water. Detroit set up the, the water situation, but the water comes from Lake Huron. Right. Stable water. All right. Stable. It comes from a glacial lake that is the third largest freshwater body in the world. And it's stable. That's what I've been drinking here since I was 10 years old. All right. So this is, this is something that in order to save $15 million, they unhooked us from Lake Huron and then and then had us drink water from the Flint River. I protested about this a month after they moved to the Flint River, and I told them that this water, it was me and two or three hundred people that's out here stood on this ground, and we protested about this quality of water. And then no one listened to us. They felt that we were just rambling a bunch of words, making a bunch of rhetoric, but we was telling the truth. That's right. And I used the word genocide and they reached all the way to the governor's office and he said it was inappropriate and inexcusable to make that remark. And he cannot say he didn't know then. The federal law states you should have known. Because two years ago when we used that word, he should have investigated the allegations and he did not. He's trying to state that he knew about it when Virginia Tech came. He knew way about it, but he chose not to do anything about it. All the evidence points to this. This is why we are asking that Attorney General Loretta Lynch arrest and prosecute the governor of this state. That's right. There's a state next near to us, Illinois. They arrested, prosecuted, and jailed the governor for a phone call he made because he wanted a Senate seat. That's right. We have a governor that knew that toxins, pollutants, and eventually lead was, in that was leaching into the water and being sent into the taps of people's homes. He knew this, his administration knew it, and we have the evidence now where it shows that they were covering it up, including from the federal government. Two years old. It is. Where have you been and where has the media been? Well, I haven't been living here, so I, for the first year I didn't even really know about it. And then as I started to know about it, I started talking about it online, on my website, on news, all that. But it, the real heroes here are the people in Flint. Melissa Mays, uh, the, this Councilman Davis. These people have 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 fought this fight for two years. This man and these other people were ridiculed. Yep. They were put down. Yep. Marginalized. Marginalized. Yep. And made to look like they were crazy. Yep. Instead, yep. they were truth tellers. Yes. They were telling the truth. Yes. And and I have been now supporting them. I will continue to support them, and I'm doing my best this week to get President Obama here, where here, he should to be. come to Flint. If he can come to Detroit to look at cars at the auto show, and I'm voted for this man twice. We need him here. We need him here, and I want to say this to him. This governor, this governor, Governor Snyder, the Flint water situation may be his Katrina, 
But if President Obama flies in and out of here and just flies over the city of Flint, it will become his New Orleans. And it's a great It'll be the moment of George Bush looking out the plane yep. over Flint yep. you gonna as he passes George by. I'm going to I'm going to be I'm convinced that he will come here. I want to get up for the media here, especially the national media, so you get these statistics correct. When you report that 9,000 children in Flint have been exposed to lead poisoning, 9,000 under the age of six, go to the U.S. Census Bureau. Total number of children under the age of six in Flint, 9,000. Just say all. All the children of Flint have been exposed to lead poisoning. All will suffer irreversible That's right. brain damage. That's right. That's right. All. That's right. All right. That's right. And and the other and the and this yes, it's a life, it's going to be a lifelong issue. It's by design. You know what? Before the the housing collapse in 08, when all when they started foreclosing on people and six million homes were foreclosed in America and people lost their jobs. Do you know where they processed those forms, the notices that people got in the mail? You know where that was done? The big banks in New York decided to do it here in Flint, Michigan. They got a warehouse. They got a warehouse here to have Flint people send eviction notices to millions of people across. The irony of this, of how this city has been abused over the years. Just this past year, while the people of Flint were being poisoned by the Flint River, what was the federal government doing? Conducting military exercises in the city of Flint. Downtown, right here. Downtown, with troops, training them in urban warfare. They were bombing neighborhoods. They were firing RPGs into empty homes because we have thousands of empty homes. And they, the Pentagon thought, what better place, what better place to, to practice urban warfare than to let's let's bomb Flint, Michigan. Let's let's play pretend war here while there's people actually living in these neighborhoods. This is just one example after another of how this city has been treated. When you drive around now, I know you're not here as often as you were, what do you see when you drive around Flint right now, as opposed to when you grew up? Well, I see it's listen, you know, when I meet Roger and me. There were still 50,000 GM jobs here. We thought it was horrible then because we'd lost 30,000 jobs. We still had 50,000 jobs. There's now less than 5,000 jobs. So, so this is, you watch Roger and me now, you look at it and you think, wow, Flint looks great, 1989. No, no, this is, this is a real tragedy. And right now what's happened here is a crime. I am standing in the middle of a crime scene. That's right. The governor is the criminal. That's right. The governor must be arrested. And we can prove it in federal court. That is correct. We can this prove man it. is saying. Be a couple on the and, and we are going to need the president to come here. Yep. And we need the Army Corps of Engineers. That's right. We don't need more of this. This for a, he signed a 90-day order, folks. That's it. 90 days a bottle of water. That's today's order. And they, because they knew I was coming here. That's right. All right? That's, right. That's not enough. Not, not enough. enough. And we're not leaving. Mandate. We're not going to go away until this is fixed. They have to return the infrastructure that the people had here in this city. And I and I want to say this, I want to say this to my fellow Americans who are not from Flint. The middle class, which has been decimated. That middle class was born in Flint, Michigan. The great sit-down strike of 1936, 1937, 80 years ago this year, happened right here in Flint, Michigan. And all historians will say that the middle class was born in Flint, Michigan because it was the first time factory workers the working class could get a living wage, That's right. buy a house, That's right. buy a car, That's right. send the kids to college. That's right. That's right. It happened That's right. first here. That's right. We are the first city in this country to have a black mayor, Floyd McCree, in 1966, 67. 67. Sam, what was it? 67. 67. 67. Hey, that we have given this country a lot. We helped to create the middle class. We did. The union movement was born here in this city. Right to work. This governor came with this law right to work, and it killed our union. Back when I was growing up, 
you had a good job no matter what your job was. That's right. If you bagged groceries at Hammonty's, you had a union job. That's right. If you were a janitor across the street, you had a union job. That's right. That's right. Right? That's right. Everybody had a good job with benefits. Yes, they did. Everybody could send their kids to college and not be in debt and have a home. All these things that was created by the struggle of this town. We are not to be we are not to be rewarded now with poisoned water. That's right. Considering what we have done for this state and for this country and for the world. It is always the testing ground to see if they can get away with things. Right. Right. I remember when General Motors started closing the factories here, and people in other states were like, well, that's never going to happen here. When people were being evicted from their homes on Christmas Eve, as I showed in my movie, Christmas Eve they would ev evict people from their homes. You would be sitting in L.A. or Seattle, and you go, wow, <laughs> thank God that's not happening here. That's just Flint. And then over the years, it became L.A. and Seattle and the East Coast and the South. It happened here first. It usually happens here first. And if you think, if they, if the government gets to get away with poisoning the people here in Flint, they will do it everywhere else. Don't think they won't try it elsewhere. This is a testing ground to see if the people are going to fight that. Michael Moore, when you start this line, Michael Moore, can you at least take them families, Michael Moore, and pay this water bill for them? Michael Moore, can you please pay at least 10 people's water bill? You got the money, Michael Moore. Michael Moore. Hey, we got a $200 water bill, Michael Moore. Can you bring some attention to that, Michael Moore? Pipe dream. Michael Moore, can you discuss any of the problems that's going on in the city of Flint with water bills? Flint's got pipe dreams. Can you discuss any of the about the service the What can he say? What can he say? He can't say nothing. He can't say nothing. He can't say nothing. Michael Moore can't say nothing. Michael Moore can't say nothing. Michael Moore can't say nothing.